Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, in part three of the show, we also premiere new TV series and new movies that are debuting in Ireland this month. And up for discussion this week is a paranormal sort of uh, investigator TV type show. It has two sort of successful seasons. It's back for a third season on channel, uh, channel Apple TV. It's called Truth Be Told. It stars the one and only Octavia Spencer playing the role of Poppy Parnell, a podcast uh, investigator who sort of takes the local media and police up for, for actions in terms of solving crimes. It also features Michael Beach, uh, Ron C. C. Pass Jones, Rico Anderson, McKeithy Pfeiffer, and our special guest this evening, the one and only Catherine Lanaza, who plays the character No Mo Haviland. And uh, Catherine, in terms of Truth Be Told, you're there for a third season now in terms of its uh, production. Uh, so many, Kate Hudson played a prominent role in season two. Uh, what's season three going to be like in terms of... Uh, Truth be told, uh, where are you going this week, this year? Is it getting more raunchier? Is it getting more uh, sort of um, bo bone collector, more thrilling, more suspense in terms of where you're going to take it? Yeah, all of that. <laughs> you said it all. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just this great, uh, it, it's really for those that like a mystery, right? It's almost a thriller. You know, it's just that, it just does that genre so well I think you know I, I I can never I'm in it and I can never figure out where it's going mm. so I like and that about it yeah and Catherine how did the opportunity come about for you first involved to get get involved with truth be told was it the original audition process were you recommended for the role were you coming off a tv series was or a movie at the time was the timing right for you was it by chance or is there a unique story be, behind how you got cast in this Funny you should ask. It was one of the longest processes ever. Um, so I, I, off, I usually still have to audition. You know, I've been, I've been a journeyman actor. I've been acting a long time, but usually for a big part um, it, like this in a series, I would probably have to do some kind of a meeting or audition. And I just got this call that I was going to get an offer to do this show with Octavia Spencer. And I was like, well, that is just so nice. <laughs> On Apple TV, I'm like, what a nice... What a, what a nice opportunity this is for me to just get handed this wonderful job. And then time went by and they said, oh no, they want you to come in and, and read for it. And so um, I went in and read for it and the, and, and it was, uh, they, they wanted you, the producer wants you, the writer, the director, everyone wants you, but the Apple's making you audition. So I go and I audition for it. And um, I got told they were like, yeah, no, <laughs> not that, no. <laughs> and my agent and my manager were pretty bothered with me and they were like well they said this and they said that and I said you know what it was a really terrific audition it might not have been what they wanted but um oh God. can you know do people not know I'm doing a show all right hang on are we back yeah okay. yeah we're there uh, okay so they um so they really were you know down on me that I had lost it and I just felt terrible because it was mine to lose everyone wanted me and I went in and I didn't give them what they wanted but the truth was it was kind of confusing like I wasn't I didn't really appear in the first episode it was it for a different part than Noah it was for a different role so mm -hmm. they said um so I so I I just said to my agents you know what you're wrong it was a great audition they might not have liked it but there wasn't anything wrong with it I didn't blow it so a week later, they called me back and they said, you know what, we want you to come back in, but we want you to do it like this. And I said, OK. So I went back in and then I did it like that. And they said, oh, we really like it. They're going to put a pin in you. Like that usually means they're going to run it up the flagpole, ask the big bosses, can they give it to Catherine? And then it usually comes back. Yes. But it did not come back. Yes. <laughs> it came back. Um, you know, they're thinking of maybe they want to make it a boy. They want to make it a 25 year old young man. Okay, so they go and make it a young man. Then apparently my agent got a call and said, no, she's back in the mix. And, and he, apparently he said, I'm not even gonna tell her. So I was shooting Dynasty, a show my husband's on with, with my husband and I was on a break and I was out in the yard like, oh no, 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 no. Then they said, okay, never mind. She's too, she said she's too 
young. The girl whose mother I was supposed to play, I was supposed to play these girls, this, these girls' mother in the first season. They cast them older. I'm too young. I'm not going to get it. Then three months go by. They call me back. They fired a different character. They had a character in the show. They'd already been shooting the show. They fired someone. They said, we want you maybe to play this part. I go in and do that part. They said they like it. They, they put a pin in it again. <laughs> they put a pin in it again. Then they come back. Then that's when they tell me it's going to be a boy. Then they say, never mind. Maybe it's going to be you. It went on and on like this. And then one day they just called me and I was trimming trees with this lady that works for me. She was my kid's nanny and my housekeeper. And she was like, no, senor, don't cut another branch. And I was like, cut the branch. She was like, ah, and then it was a big hole in the tree. She was right. And I get this phone call and I'm trimming a tree. I said, you've got the series. So then I went and that's how I came to Truth Be Told. Just a, just a short little process. It was about six months or more. Six months or more as a very and two wonderful- parts. And two parts. And uh, <laughs> Catherine, in terms of shooting uh, the episodes and shooting the sort of take, were the long shot days in terms of production? And what was it like in terms of shooting an episode from start to start to finish? Well, the first year, because I was replacing someone, I, I went in and I would just reshoot all the scenes that the, you know, they were, they had rewritten the script. And so I just, I did about eight episodes of the first season in one month. So I was reshooting my scenes and then I was shooting all the new scenes. So I only worked about a month or two, maybe two months on the first season. Just, so that was kind of how that went. And then um, they were, they're pretty typical. Octavia likes to work fast. Um, she doesn't like to work really long. And we had great directors. The directors were really great. And so it was really pleasant. It was just great. And it was, frankly, the second year when we went back, it was just, it was during lockdown. There were no vaccines yet. I was just so happy to see people, <laughs> you know, to be able to, meet with people we were all testing up and so it was safe for us to be together it was it was great it was great indeed and uh Catherine in terms of your own character Mo now how would you start to describe her what's your take on her in terms of a person what well, what do you do try to bring to the role well you know, the character was a lot of a, a character was kind of a service character in a way, like the poppy sort of driving the storyline along. And she's an, sort of an investigative character. And there wasn't that much written about who she was personally. So I had decided that um, I was gay. And at the beginning of the, the second season, I didn't tell anyone, right? And so at the beginning of the second season, I had a conversation with the director and I said, you know, I think I'm gay. <laughs> and she said, she said, you know, we've had a four month conversation about that. Half of the writer's room thought, all the writer's room that was there last year thought you were gay. And I was, I felt so proud that I had made her gay without ever saying I was gay. And they could tell that I was gay. And then she said, but we've written you this boyfriend. And so I was like, oh, well, I guess, I guess I'm not gay anymore. So then I had a boyfriend in the second, in the, I had a boyfriend in the second season for a minute. Um, so I would just, you know, I try to give myself things like that, that maybe not necessarily the script doesn't give you to ground myself in the character. I try to decide who they are. One of the things that they had told me was that she, they wanted me to play her Southern because the creator knew that I was from the South. But a lot of, I don't know how much familiar you are with the South or the Southern accents, but it can often sound very flowery. Hickey. Huh? Hickey, dare I say. Hickey? Yeah, hickey, 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 hickey. sorry. Oh, well, I actually gave Noah kind of a hickey accent. They, they, um, they're often very flowery. Like my grandmother talked like this, like, oh, Catherine. And it, there's a kind of a lot of hidden meanings in the way that they talk, like, oh, bless your heart, means like, aren't you an idiot? You know, it's just stuff like that. So, but I wanted the character of Noah to be someone that was very altruistic and very straightforward and almost kind of like a guy, you know? Um, and so I gave her an accent that was was more hickey, was more not flowery. Like, if you, you know, if you see the show, I just kind of talk like that, like, hey, probably almost like I'm a guy, you know? And just kind of wanted to, to be a character that every aspect of her felt like 
she was good and true and real. I usually play villains and, uh, and bosses and people that aren't like that. So it was very fun to play someone that was actually, that was actually good and altruistic. And uh, Catherine, in terms of now, in terms of other projects in the works, is it a busy time for you at the moment? Have you other TV series, movies coming our way? I have just finished a movie called um, Russ and Drew that Megan Good, my good friend from a series that we did together called Deception for NBC a few years back. Megan Good directs it and it's with starring Megan Good and Terrence J. And, um, but I spent most of the year doing the play version of Designing Women from okay. the original creator of that show. Was it, I don't know if you guys got that over there. It was a very big TV show in America in like the late eighties, early nineties. It's a feminist, um, pretty feminist comedy. So I've been starring in that. I've done two or three productions of that in, in 2022. Um, so, and then I'm just waiting to see what I'm gonna do next. Uh, Catherine I have to be told I, I could not have you on the airways uh, there this evening not to talk about one of the most iconic uh, Will Ferrell movies of all time and you obviously feature it as uh, it's right up there with Step Brothers in terms of uh, comedic humour it's uh, with Sat Gibbs and I because the one and only the campaign and you played the character Rose Brady was that just a laugh a moment from the time you walked on that set until the time you finished were you coming home every day in, in terms of in stitches in terms of lapping uh, working beside Zach and uh, Will was it very hard to even to keep a straight face while even you were sort of shooting all that that all that um, I when I first so I was on the movie for a month or something and but they shot all of my part all of the main part all the part where I talk and have scenes with Will in the first you know few weeks first and I thought I'm going to be so bad in this movie because all I was doing was trying not to break up laughing the whole time. Like there was no thinking about like what I'm trying to play or what I'm trying to do. I just, I had to stare at him. I don't know if you know, but if you stare at someone right here, it will look like you're looking at someone in the eyes. And I had to try to look at him in a set because if I looked at his actual face and what he was doing, I would just break up. All I was doing was trying trying not to laugh and I I came home and I was I was living in a little um apartment building with Sarah Baker who played Zach's wife and I was I remember saying to her Sarah I mean he's so funny he's just like so funny you can't you you can't believe how funny he is she goes yeah Catherine it's Will Ferrell <laughs> everybody knows but it was definitely like that it was it was definitely I remember one time there was a scene, I don't even know if it's in the, in the movie, where we're like being interviewed by two people. We're, we're supposed to be doing a television interview and I couldn't keep it together. I could not get it together. And the director actually had to say, Catherine, come on. I just had to like step aside and pull myself together. Yeah, very much. Yeah. And the character Rose Brady, did you like that? You're almost playing a... Uh sort of dare I say uh, no offense but she was really the ultimate stuck up sort of cow in, in terms of that she wasn't the very sort of uh, a nice sort of person as well is that really fun to be play something so far away from the norm so far to think to play that sort of that sort of character because however Will was in terms of that you were just uh, an absolute uh, torn in his side dare I say yeah I um, actually, when I, when I went to audition, um, I had done an audition for the casting director and then I went back expecting, I couldn't believe I got asked back to the callback because it was a pretty huge project, right? And then I get to the callback and I think it's gonna be every other girl from like Saturday Night Live, every girl that's ever had her own sitcom. And there was only one other girl. And I was like, oh, hell. And I got, suddenly I got really nervous, but I had just finished doing this movie with Robert Duvall where I played his daughter and I had a couple scenes alone with Duvall. And I thought, you know what? And we had become really close. I was like, if you can do a, if you can do a movie with Robert Duvall, you know what I mean? You can go and audition with Will Ferrell. 
So I sort of just like put, it sounds weird, but I sort of just put Bobby in my pocket, you know, and I thought I just got to go for this. Cause if I didn't just go for it, I would be intimidated. Right. So there was a part where she's screaming at him and I just screamed in his ear. And I, I there was a part where she says, says something to him and I grabbed his balls in the, in the audition. I just did what I would do in the movie and I got it. And funny enough, years later, my friend Megan Good was auditioning for Anchorman and she asked me if I would help her with the audition and Anchorman too. And so we taped it and, and she did a great job. My husband and I helped her tape it. And when she, after she taped, I said, you're gonna get this movie. And I said, now remember, if you get called back for an audition with him, you have to just go nuts. I think that's why I got it. I think people are intimidated by him. I think you just have to go for it. And she said that she did. She said she threw her shoe at him. And she was screaming at him. And she got the job. So if you get an audition with Wolf Girl, basically just abuse him and you'll get the part. Okay. Good to know. Oh, good to know. Hopefully, please, God, I, I'll go for audition with Will fairly soon. Anyway, I'm sure what we'd have to do, we'd just have to throw some Irish sort of say, snakes at him and St. Paddy sort of stuff and sort of uh, in terms of that. Uh, that seems to be the plot. Anyway, Catherine, let us uh, for the final 30 seconds, you might enlighten all our audience and listeners why they should tune in for season three of Truth Be Told and what's in store for them. Over to you, Catherine. Wow, the last 30 seconds. Well, as always, it features the wonderfully talented Octavia Spencer, Tracy Toms, Anifa Woods, Ron Cephas Jones, who just won a couple more Emmys, I think. And um, it's just a great mystery that you don't, I have, I have felt like the, the, the gem of this show is that I never know where it's going, that I'm always surprised. So if okay. you like mysteries, tune in. <laughs> Catherine Lanassa, pleasure talking to you on the airwaves this evening to relive uh, your uh, to relive your memories of the campaign and obviously your current role as Mo in Truth Be Told. And uh, hopefully, please God, we'll see you for more seasons to come. And it's great to see further projects in the pipeline for you. So do check out Catherine Lanassa in season three of uh, Truth Be Told on Channel Apple TV. Uh, Catherine, take care, stay safe, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much.